Hi everyone, in this video, let's take a look at a simple infrared emitter and how to use it with the quantum system. Let's get started. The infrared emitter is a type of cheap and efficient LED that emits light in the infrared range of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. IR LEDs are useful in a number of types of electronics. They can be used to control devices such as your TV. For example, when you hit a button on your TV remote, an IR LED repeatedly turns on and off, typically at 38 kHz or 38,000 times a second, to transmit information like the volume or channel control to an IR photo sensor on your TV. In this How To Electronics video, we'll go over how to connect an IR LED to the quantum platform and go over the different ways you can create an application to control any IR device with it. Before we start assembling our circuit, I would first like to show you the documentation pages for this component. There is the hardware reference, which will show you how to connect the IR to the builder base and create the firmware on the Q server. And then there is also the object reference, which will show you how the IR emitter object works in the application builder. I will have the links for these pages in the description below. So here is the IR emitter. This one comes with the component kit, which we sell on our website. I will have a link for it in the video description below. As you can see, it's just one emitter onto a PCB with a 10K resistor and three pin headers, one for the signal, one for five volts, and one for ground. So let's go ahead and take this and connect it to our builder base here. What we'll need are three male to female jumper wires that will connect the, from the pin headers to the terminals on the builder base. We'll start with the signal pin on the very left here. I'm gonna take this orange male to female jumper wire and then connect it to the signal pin. And then I'll connect that to GP0 on the builder base. And then next, I will bring in this red male to female jumper wire and connect that to the five volt pin on the IR emitter here. And then I'll connect that to the five volt terminal on the builder base. And then lastly, I'll bring in a black male to female jumper wire, connect that to the ground pin header, and then connect that to the ground terminal on the builder base. And there we go. Now we have connected our IR emitter to our builder base. Let's go ahead and power this on and then go to our Q server to do the rest of the setup. Now that we're on the Q server, let's go ahead and start by pairing the builder base that's connected to the IR emitter. To do that, go to the clients tab, go to the unpaired tab, find your builder base, mine is 16808, then go to actions and then select pair. Once your client is paired, go ahead and click the setup button and then give it a name. I'll just name this one IR emitter. And then for location, why not select living room since I'll be controlling the TV that's in my living room. And there we go, and then click save. Once you have done that, the next step is to turn on our IR service. So to do that, we'll go to the library tab, and then you'll go to services. And then where it says infrared, you just click download. Once that infrared service is installed, go to the services tab, and then for the infrared service, we'll go to actions and then click start. Once it says your infrared service is all set up, we'll just click activate, and then it's all good to go. Now let's go ahead and create the firmware for this IR emitter. We'll go to the firmware tab. We'll click create new, and then give it a name. I will name it IR emitter, and then let's add our hardware. We'll just search IR emitter, give it a name. I'll name it IR emitter as well, and then click add hardware. Now let's select the drop down for that hardware. For driver, we'll click IR emitter. For the pin, I connected the signal pin from the emitter to GP0 on my builder base. So I'll select GP0. Once that's done, just click save. Now that the firmware file is created, we'll go to actions for that file, and then we'll select upload. And then we're gonna select the IR emitter builder base client that we attach to the IR emitter and then click upload. Now, while that's uploading, let's go ahead and check out the app for this. So we'll quit out of that. So for the app, I've already created a demo application that we'll be taking a look at. 
This will show you the different options you can do to create the IR hex codes that you'll be sending out the IR emitter. Once you have gone over that, we'll also go and create those different options step by step. So for now, let's go ahead and view this application. I'm gonna to go to edit. So here is the demo app for the IR emitter that I created. Basically, it just has a couple options on how you can configure, store, and send your IR hex codes to the IR emitter in order to perform a certain action. So for the first option, it basically utilizes the infrared service on the Quantum Q server. This is that service we activated earlier. The infrared service is pretty nice. It's basically a large database full of different IR hex codes for a bunch of different devices and is all stored in one place so you can easily configure what you want and then it will send it out through the IR emitter. So how this works is the initial trigger here, when I start the application, is going to trigger on the infrared service. And through the connected dropdown interface objects, I'll be able to select what type of IR hex code I want through the quantum dashboard here. And then it will be able to send it back to the infrared service. And then it will send that code out and store it into the static string object. And then I'll have this interface button trigger it to send that message to the IR emitter to the receiving device. Now for the drop-down menus, it is separated by brand, devices, configurations, and actions. Now keep in mind, this is only used to perform a single action that you want to send out the IR emitter. If you have multiple actions you want to use to send out through the IR emitter based on different buttons you press on, say, a remote, you'll need multiple copies of this. So you can just select it, copy and paste it, and then organize it however you want. Now for the second option, it basically bypasses the infrared service. There are a few pros and cons to this. I've included those in the comment objects here. One of the pros is yes, it's more simpler to use and set up. However, you will need to know the IR hex codes in advance. Now there are different ways to do this. You can buy an IR code reader. And then once you figure out the code, you just go to the string port here on the stack string object and then input that value in here. Remember, don't include spaces. So that's one way to do it. You can find the IR hex codes online and then put it in here. And also, if you're using a device that has the IR codes in our infrared database, you can just do this initially to figure out the IR hex code. And then you just bring in a text interface object, and then you connect the code out port to the import of the text interface object here. When you do that, it will send you the IR hex code here. You can just copy and paste and save it for later, store into the string, and then you're good to go. So that's just a quick overview on the two different options that you can do to create an application for the IR emitter. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and create these options ourselves step by step. So I'll click Save App. Return to My Apps. Let's create a new app here. We'll just call it IR Emitter. Now the first thing I'll want to bring in is the infrared service object. And then next I'll bring in a initial trigger. And then we'll connect that to the load brands port of the infrared service object. Then next let's bring in four dropdown interface objects. Then now let's connect them to each of these first four ports here. So the top one will be brands. We'll connect that to the array port on the dropdown. And for the next one, we'll connect the devices to the second dropdown. And for configs, we'll connect it to the third dropdown. And then lastly, actions to the fourth dropdown. Now we have connected our dropdown interface objects to their corresponding ports here. Let's go ahead and give them names now so we can see them here in the application and also what they're named in the dashboard. So for the first one, we'll name brands. Make sure you name both the object name and the dashboard label, and then click Save Properties. Second one will be Devices, and then we'll do Save Properties. Third one will be Configs, and then Save Properties. 
And then the last one will be actions. And then click save properties. Now with this option, again, basically what's happening is the initial trigger is loading the database to the drop-down menus. You select which brands, devices, configs, and actions in those drop-down menus, and then it's gonna send those selections back to the infrared service object to, so it knows which code to send out. So that's why what we'll do next is connect the value out port of each drop-down interface object and connect it to the corresponding port on the inside of the infrared service object. So for example, this first one, it's going to be the brands drop-down menu. So we'll connect it to the brand import here. And then for devices, we'll connect it to devices and then make sure to just clean it up a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. And then we'll do the same for config. And then lastly, actions. Now what we need to do is bring in a static string code object here. Zoom out a little bit more. And then what we're going to do is connect the code out port of the infrared service object and connect it to the string in port of the static string object. So now this static string is basically going to store that IR hex code, which we chose to use in here until we trigger it to send out to the IR emitter. So once you have the static string, let's bring in a button interface object. Now you can use any type of digital trigger for this. For this app, I'll just be using the interface button. I'll take the state port and connect it to the trigger port of the static string. I'll just name this IR service, IR service, because we'll also be doing the other method. And then click save properties. Now we'll bring in the IR emitter. Now, once we have done that, we'll connect the string out port to the IR emitter. Now we have built the first option from the demo app. Let's just do one more thing to this. Let's bring in a text interface object to see what the hex code looks like when we send it out. So we'll just connect the code out port to the import of this text interface object as well. We'll give it a name. Let's just say IR code, IR code, and then click save properties. And then also let's give the IR emitter a name, especially if you're using multiple IR emitters on the same network. But in this case, I'll just name it IR emitter and then click save properties. So before we go ahead and do option two for the app, let's go ahead and run it and perform the action just to see what it does. So I'll go ahead and click save app. I'm gonna to return to my apps. Now I'm gonna run our new IR emitter application. We're going to map that IR emitter hardware object in the application to our IR emitter client with the firmware file we named IR emitter. And then once you've done that, click save and run. So from there, I'm going to go to the dashboard. I'm going to find that application. Now you can see the drop down interface objects here. We have the IR service trigger button here. And then we have the text interface object here where we'll be seeing the IR code once we trigger it. So since I'll be controlling my TV, the brand, it'll be a Samsung. So you can just search it or you can go through the large list of devices that are a part of our database. So that's entirely up to you. But in this case, there is Samsung. I'll select Samsung, the device, they have a bunch here too, but I'll select TV. Config, the only option for this device is 7.7. So I'll select that. And then now for the actions, you can go through the desired actions you want, the different numbers, volume, channel, mute, so forth. However, I just want the TV to turn on and off. So I'll select power. Now, once I've done that, the configuration is complete and has sent the IR hex code to the static string and that text interface object. So this is what it looks like. It's just a series of numbers. So with that, let's go ahead and actually copy the hex code. And I'm just gonna copy and save it for when we do option two. 
And then here is the button. When I press it, it's going to send out this hex code to my Samsung TV to tell it to turn on or off. So now that we have done option one, let's go back to our app and then do option two. We'll go back to apps. We can go ahead and pause our application, go to edits. We'll keep this one in here. And then let's bring in a button interface object and then a static string code object. And then let's name this one option two. Click save properties. We'll do the same thing we did here. We'll connect the button to the trigger port of the static string. Now for this string import here, since I copied the IR hex code from before, I can go ahead and just paste it into default value and click save properties. And now that message is already stored in here. I don't have to deal with the configurations like I did up here. And then you connect the string port to the IR emitter hardware object, and then it's good to go. So I'll just clean it up. Now, why don't we bring in another text interface object, just so we know when we click the button, it's gonna send out that message. So from the static string, I'll connect it to the end port of the text message. Instead of showing the code once it's configured, I'm gonna be showing the code once it's triggered. So I've done that. Let's just type in option two for the name, and then click Save Properties. So once I've done that, I'll click Save App. Now we have already mapped our hardware, in this case the IR emitter, so we don't have to return our apps. All we need to do is click the Play button here, and now the app is running. So now let's go back to the dashboard, click the IR emitter app. And now you can see we still have the option one configuration here, the thing is with that first option, one of the cons is if you restart the app, the configuration is reset. So you have to do that configuration all over again. But if you already know the hex codes, that's why option two is a little bit better. So let's go ahead and just click the option two button. When I do that, you can see the hex code has been sent out to the IR emitter and also to that text interface object. So with that, let's go ahead and do a quick demo. I'll be controlling my TV on and off using the IR emitter and this application we have just created. So here we are in my living room. In the background, you can see my Samsung TV. On my computer, I have the application that we just created and powered on and ready to go is the IR emitter that we connected to the builder base. I also have my iPhone here with the dashboard and my iPad here with the dashboard just to show you the complete versatility of the quantum platform and how we can control this TV from all three devices. So just to show you how it works, here's the Samsung remote. When I power it on, you can see the TV turns on there. Now let's say I wanna turn it off with my computer. I'm just going to go to the dashboard, IR emitter, and here you can see I've already done the configuration. The brand is Samsung, devices is TV, configuration is 7.7. And then the action I wanted to perform is power. The IR code is already loaded into the static string to be sent to the IR emitter. So once I push this button, you should see the TV turn off. And there we go, TV has turned off. Now let's say I want to turn on the TV using the option two that we created with my iPhone. I'm just gonna to go to the screen and then scroll down to option two. And then when I press option two, you can see the IR hex code has been sent out and the TV is turning back on. And then now let's say I want to turn off the TV again, but I want to use the iPad. All I need to do is, let's say I want to use the IR service again. I'll just go ahead and push that IR service button and the TV turns off. So that's how you use the IR emitter with the quantum system to control an IR device like your TV. Happy making.